Located in the old city of East Jerusalem lies El Aqsa Mosque, a World Heritage Site defined by some of the most magnificent architecture in history, with a number of graceful domes adorning its courtyards. We bid them shalom, salam, peace. I cannot see any possibility for a real peace. Jews will be visiting the Temple Mount. The Palestinian cause will erupt victorious. We deserve our land back. It's significant to all three Abrahamic religions, and for Muslims, this site is the third holiest after Mecca and Medina, attracting thousands of pilgrims from Palestine and across the globe. But it's also one of the world's most contested territories, and today, the site frequently sees Israeli raids and attacks on Palestinian worshippers. So why does this site hold such religious and cultural significance to Palestinians? And how, over the years, has it become a symbol of their resistance? This is the history of Al-Aqsa Mosque. Spanning 144,000 square meters, Al-Aqsa Mosque complex is made up of several landmarks, including Jerusalem's most recognizable structure, the gold-plated Dome of the Rock, or Qubbat al-Sakhra. The initial structure of the mosque and its round wooden dome was built by the Umayyad Caliph Abdul Malik in the late 7th century. Its architecture and mosaics were patterned after nearby Byzantine churches and palaces, the Dome of the Rock continues to define Jerusalem aesthetically. It's the most beautiful place probably uh, in the world. According to Islamic belief, the rock above which the dome is constructed is the spot from where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven in what is known to Muslims as the miraculous night journey or Al-Isra al-Miraj. Islamic belief states that a divine ladder descended from the highest level of paradise to the Rock of Ascension. Today on the uh, drum, you will find chapter 17 uh, of the Quran, Surah Al-Isra. This is the night journey. These inscriptions are some of the earliest surviving examples of Quranic text. This, along with the intricately decorated stained glass windows, makes the mosque one of the most celebrated examples of Islamic architecture, as well as the oldest surviving in the world. For Muslims, the most significant building in the complex is the silver-domed Qibli Mosque, also known as Al-Aqsa Mosque. This is where the Imam leads congregation in prayer. It's located at the southern end of the complex and was originally built by the Caliph Umar ibn Khattab following the Muslim conquest of Levant in 636. When he met with Patriarch Sophronius, who invited Umar al-Khattab to pray at the uh, Sepulchre Church and he declined politely, citing his reasons. He was worried about future generations of Muslims considering this as a right, which is really uh, a very uh, beautiful paradigm for whoever is the authority. Stay away from the uh, religious space of the, of the other. Don't abuse uh, power, something that we see systematically at Al-Aqsa Mosque. Where he stepped outside and prayed, Muslims later on built Mosque of, uh, uh, of Omar. He concluded one of the most beautiful interfaith agreements, we call it the Pact of Omar, in which he assured Christians of the sanctity of their holy places and their freedom of, uh, of worship. Due to earthquakes and attacks, Al Qibli Mosque underwent a series of expansions and renovations by the Umayyad, the Abbasid, Fatimid, Ayyubid, and Ottoman rulers. For Jews, the site is referred to as Temple Mount and is believed to be where the two biblical Jewish temples once stood. On the southwest fringe of Al-Aqsa Mosque, between the Gate of the Prophet and the Moroccan Gate, lies the Western Wall. Muslims refer to it as Al-Buraq, named after a winged, horse-like creature that Muslims believe bore the Prophet Muhammad into the heavens 
where he spoke to God. For Jews, the Western Wall is known as the Wailing Wall and is believed to be the last remnant of the Second Temple, which was destroyed by the Romans in 70 CE. Some Israelis believe that the mission of Zionism will not be complete until a third temple has been built, and attempts have been made by extremist settler groups to damage the Islamic sites. Palestinians view the archaeological claims, as well as the Jewish-led tours of Al-Aqsa, as an attempt to Judaize the city and push out the Palestinians. In recent years, settler incursions on Al-Aqsa with the protection of the Israeli military have increased. 1948 the year the first Arab-Israeli war broke out, after which Israel declared statehood and captured 78% of historic Palestine. East Jerusalem, where Al-Aqsa Mosque is situated, fell under the custodianship of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan. But Israel's encroachment intensified in 1967, and after the Six-Day War, Israel illegally annexed the Old City and Al-Aqsa, violating international law. Following the war, Jordan and Israel agreed that the Waqf would control the affairs inside the mosque, while Israel controlled external security. Non-Muslims were only permitted to visit the site with permission from the Islamic Waqf, and were not allowed to pray there. But this didn't stop settler groups from raiding the mosque without Palestinian permission and carrying out excavations in the area. In 1990, right-wing Jewish settlers attempted to lay a cornerstone for the third temple in the compound. This provocative act triggered a protest in which Israeli forces killed 21 Palestinians. But it wasn't until the 28th of September 2000 that the status quo of Al-Aqsa shifted even further. Then, Israeli opposition leader Ariel Sharon visited Al-Haram Sharif, or Temple Mount, surrounded by Israeli guards and police. Ariel Sharon practically broke into the mosque with a very large contingent of, uh, of soldiers, maybe up to 2,000 soldiers. That act of Ariel Sharon was to boost his numbers at the ballot boxes. It was the election. Uh, people like Ariel and Sharon, they don't, they don't care really about uh, religion. This is the context for the beginning of the Second Intifada. The Second Intifada was a sweeping Palestinian uprising that lasted for five years, igniting all-out skirmishes between Palestinians and Israeli forces that left more than 3,000 Palestinians and 1,000 Israelis dead. It also helped catapult into power Ariel Sharon, who was seen as stamping Israel's mark on Al-Aqsa after years of failed Jews, peace negotiations. Muslims Once in office, Christians. Sharon began the construction of the border wall a 700-kilometer barrier surrounding the West Bank, cutting off access to Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa Mosque. Ariel Sharon is behind the separation uh, policy. Uh, in Hebrew, it's Hafrada, basically separating from the Palestinians. Once the uh, wall became intact, coming to Al-Aqsa Mosque became um, almost impossible without these permits. Up till that moment, Palestinians from the West Bank could come to Jerusalem and pray at Al-Aqsa Mosque. Of the three million Palestinians living in the occupied West Bank, only worshippers over a certain age were permitted to enter Jerusalem for Friday prayer, and only with approved permits. Those that were allowed were forced through checkpoints, creating mass congestion and tension. In recent years, Israeli settler incursions under the protection of authorities have increased at Al-Aqsa with tours organized five days a week. Settlers had previously refrained from entering Al-Aqsa during Muslim holidays, but that too has changed. The incursions trigger confrontations with Palestinians, which often lead to violent Israeli crackdowns. Tensions tend to escalate during Ramadan, when Israeli authorities place restrictions on Palestinian worshippers who want to pray at the site, or when members of the Knesset tour the area. On the 6th of May 2021, violent raids by Israeli police on Al-Aqsa Mosque during Ramadan ignited a deadly conflict with Hamas. The 11-day Gaza war killed 253 Palestinians, including 66 children.
So what do these Israeli incursions mean for Palestinians? Many see the increased presence of settlers in Al-Aqsa as an attempt by Israel to claim religious ownership over the site and erase its Palestinian religious and cultural heritage. Protecting the site is seen by Palestinians as a religious and national duty. I'm a member of the Waqf Council uh, at Al-Aqsa Mosque and I teach daily. You have the uh, executive management, that's the Waqf department. And they know how difficult it is for them to do their job. And the fear for annulling the uh, historical status quo is uh, serious, is real. By allowing settlers to pray Al-Aqsa, Palestinians fear that the site will be divided in a similar manner to the Ibrahimiyya Mosque in Hebron in the 1990s. In Hebron, after the massacre in which Baruch Goldstein um, literally killed Muslim worshippers inside the mosque, the Ibrahimi mosque, while they were praying during the dawn prayer, rather than removing the settlers from Hebron, now they have entrenched the uh, settlers' presence and they uh, divided the mosque, uh, the Ibrahim mosque, about 60%, including the new uh, parts of the building, are with the, uh, with the Israelis. There are 10 days when Muslims are not allowed inside the Ibrahim Mosque at all. Since 1967, Al-Aqsa has been the most widely recognized symbol of Palestinian resistance in the face of occupation. This complex is seen as a sanctuary, a place for prayer, celebration, culture and community. But as the fight over this 35-acre piece of land continues to intensify, many Palestinians fear that they may one day lose it for good. <laughs>